In the opening scene, we see Darcy Harrison, who works with She, a leading female magazine for fashion and beauty. She steps into the office quite on time and her assistant Joanna comes to steal her away. On getting to her desk, she sprays a fragrance on Darcy and asks to hear her opinion about the best-seller fragrance about 15 years ago. She needs to be certain it is something the readers want. They continue chatting about the product until their boss and Darcy's ex-boyfriend, Brandon, walks by to his office. They aren't expecting him to be around but there he is. Joanna asks how things are between them since their breakup six months ago, but she pretends to be carried away with her typing and acts like everything is moving on quite well. Brandon interrupts the ladies' discussion by requesting to see Darcy in his office. She walks over to him with a smile plastered on her face. He informs her that he needs her to spearhead the September cover shoot which he usually takes full responsibility for. Something came up and she's the only one he trusts to hand it over to. Brandon proposes they set their personal history aside and start afresh on a new page for work's sake. He gives her full control to utilize her ideas from scratch to finish because he trusts her judgment to work out something to remedy their sales, which are falling fast. Darcy is excited about the opportunity as she has been trying to get her hands on this project. She steps out of his office, enthusiastic and elated for the opportunity given to her. Later, Darcy steps out to a newsstand to have a look at some of She's magazine covers on display. Suddenly a man comes and lays his hand on a particular copy at the same time as her. They argue about who should have it when the man blurts out his opinion about the cover. She's surprised to hear him call the cover the most uninspiring one he's ever seen. Darcy fires back at him for sharing his unsolicited and offensive opinion about the magazine cover, she purchases the cover and walks away from him a little pissed. Darcy later meets up with Joanna at a cafe to run through the to-do list for the shoot. Joanna shares that Simon Leary's office is refusing to let his photographers work with them. She knows it's a really big deal for Darcy because the September cover always happens to be the fashion moment of the season, and if they get it right, they can get She's reputation back on track. She assures her not to worry about it as she will activate Plan B she has some other way she could reach out to him. The following morning, Darcy waits for Simon at the park where he goes for a run every morning. She joins him in running immediately after she sees him coming. She tries to convince him to work with them but there's little he can do because his photographers are all booked for months ahead, and he's certain he'll be unable to work within their time frame. Simon offers her another option which is to work with a colleague of his who just got back to town after a career break. Though, he's expecting him to be all booked up because he's kind of a big name and he might just be holding out for some high-profile editorial work like he was doing before. Darcy, who is almost running out of breath, makes sure Simon gets her point and she does not intend to take no for an answer. He promises to set them up for a meeting but then, he warns her not to get her hopes too high. Almost as soon as he leaves Darcy to continue with his run, Simon sends a message to Nate to inform him about the job opportunity. He reveals to Nate that it might be a good opportunity to put his stamp on something and remind the industry of what he's capable of. Darcy stops by a cafe dressed for work. She places an order but has to run out. Almost immediately, she gets a text from Joanna informing her that Simon's photographer will be at their office in 10 minutes. On arriving at the office, she wonders what the occasion is seeing everyone holding a glass half filled with wine. Joanna informs her that Brandon got engaged. She's taken by surprise but tries to keep her composure. Brandon spots her and excuses himself to apologize for not informing her about it earlier because he couldn't find the right time to do so. Darcy pretends to be happy for him and lies about seeing someone new herself. Suddenly, she points to the guy sitting in her office and refers to him as her guy. She excuses herself that she doesn't want to keep him waiting because he wants to take her out for lunch. She congratulates Brandon once more and walks into her office. However, she's surprised to find the guy with a negative opinion about She Magazine's cover sitting in her office. Nate Taylor gets up to introduce himself. However, Darcy is aware that Brandon is watching them through the transparent glass, demarcating her office space and she wouldn't want to sell herself short. She grabs Nate in an embrace and accepts his apology for his comment at the newsstand. She offers to take him out for a coffee date and grabs his hand on their way out in a bid to create an impression as they step out. At the cafe, both of them talk about the kind of job Nate usually does and the kind of style Darcy wants to put out there. She reveals she'd want to shoot something creative that pops on the shelf which will help boost their sales as well. She brings out her book and shows him some ideas she has in mind. Nate agrees to work with her after seeing her plans to try something different from their regular style. He sets a time for them to meet up so he can show her some location ideas he has. The following morning, they meet up and Darcy shares a concept she intends to work on for the cover. Since the magazine is all about confident, everyday women, she intends they use the very readers who have made the She Magazine a success over the last decade and a half. She thinks it'll be great to put them on the cover as a celebration of womanhood. Nate can't believe she's serious, he works with professional models and not with people who don't know what they are doing. They argue back and forth about her idea and then proceed with the discussion while walking down the Central Park. 
Darcy reveals she wants the location for the shoot with their readers to be in the Central Park. Nate laughs because her idea is simply her wanting to work with a cliched location that will turn out to look exactly like what they have on their regular magazine covers. She shares other ideas with him, but he doesn't like any of her ideas, he prefers to take the shoot in a much more editorial direction, something with a dynamic story idea. Nate takes her to an urban area with graffiti all sprawled up on the walls. He feels it will be a suitable location seeing the burst of colors but Darcy thinks otherwise. She's not going to have their women take shots in a depressing and dirty location. So, she suggests they find something else they can both settle for. Nate agrees with her and shares other ideas they can work with but she continues refusing them, revealing they are not up to the standard she wants. Later at night, Darcy shares her frustration with Joanna. She feels that Nate thinks he has free reign to trample all over her ideas just because he is a big shot in the industry, and she mocks his ideas. Joanna reminds her why she wants to work with Simon's clients which is because they are creative and edgy just as Nate is. She suggests they just find their stride. Darcy agrees with her but she worries she will never hear the last of it if Brandon doesn't like it. The next morning, Darcy and Nate walk down the streets and he requests to know more about her readers since it's all about them. She describes their readers' personalities and the things they want and expect. He smiles lightly as he grasps the concept, and asks that she leave it to him as he might have some ideas already. When Nate gets home later in the evening, he calls his mother to find out how her rose business is going so far. He also shares his struggles as he feels he's starting all over again. He intends to come back home and pick up from where he left off with his wedding photography business again if things don't improve in New York. She advises him not to make rash decisions, and in a bid to encourage her son about his deal with Darcy, she reminds him of the photos he took on her 60th birthday. Nate listens with rapt attention as his mom praises how artistic he can be with capturing the essence of people more so, making the everyday woman look and feel wonderful. At Darcy's, Joanna congratulates Darcy for the promotion but she notices her friend isn't too enthused about it. Darcy feels there's something fishy about it especially with Brandon being a control freak, but Joanna assures her she will do great regardless of his personality. She confesses she's unsure about Nate, and is worried he might take the whole thing too far and then she'll have nothing to do about it. Joanna encourages her not to get too worked up about it. The ladies click their wine glasses and take a sip hoping everything will turn out great. The next morning, Darcy decides to go through Nate's previous work as she eats from her bowl of cereal. A few hours later, she walks into her office with Nate behind her. She stops them halfway to the elevator and beckons on him to help her describe another fragrance she picks up. She sprays it on her skin and stretches her hand out for them to feel the scent. She's impressed with Nate's description of the scent and confesses she will intercept him to come and give her his opinion about different fragrances whenever he comes to their office. As they head for the elevator, she finds Brandon coming out of it. He attempts to find out more about the guy she calls her boyfriend but Darcy quickly avoids the situation by pulling Nate into the elevator. Later on, Darcy meets up with Nate in a cafe. She suggests they get to know each other since they will be spending quite a lot of time together, but he only wants them to focus on the discussion regarding the magazine cover. Darcy agrees but she's surprised to find out that he doesn't take notes of the ideas that he thinks of. He sees no need for that because clarity on ideas takes up much time. He urges her to keep an open mind about the next location he's going to show her which is quite the opposite of what she wants. Nate takes her to an empty studio room, he assures her that they can mold the blank canvas into the perfect backdrop for the story they intend to pass, and they could do old Hollywood glamour. He shows her some sketches he made which sometimes help him visualize the concept. He tries to convince Darcy to give the studio thing a try since they are not working with professional models, and they can turn the studio upside down. They think no one will even know it's not a location shoot. Although, she isn't too convinced but she decides to take the risk with the most exciting photographer in New York. Nate feels embarrassed and at the same time happy that she read his piece, the American-style piece. Next, they meet up with Joanna to pick out some costumes that will be great for the readers. Nate doesn't think any of the clothes are great, so Joanna decides to help his imagination with what their readers will look like in the outfits. She drags Darcy with her to fit some of the clothes. Seeing how elegant the ladies look, he is finally convinced that the outfits are great. He gives some suggestions as well. Brandon soon comes to interrupt their euphoria, and the ladies smartly come up with an excuse to get away from his prying eyes. Darcy hurries Nate to come along with her for a meeting and in a minute, they leave Brandon standing there all by himself. Later, Joanna comes to meet Darcy. She asks why she became suddenly flustered when Brandon walked in on them. Left with no choice, Darcy spills the beans and she tells Brandon that Nate is her boyfriend. She confesses that she just didn't want him to think she wasn't over him and that the lie was the best she came up with at the time. Now she's not even sure she wants to tell Nate because they are getting along and she doesn't want to go back to square one with him. Joanna is astonished at her friend's revelation, but she insists that she tell Nate the truth, especially if she intends to keep the charade up. Darcy prepares to leave work for the day when Brandon comes to meet her. He reveals that he made his findings about Nate Taylor and how he suddenly disappeared after making a name for himself. He claims to be helping her by looking out for her before Nate vanishes on her. 
She tells him to trust her and leave everything to her, as she walks into the elevator in a bid to stop the discussion. The following day, Simon and Nate go on a run in the park. The talk about Nate's bookings. Simon reveals he's planning to ask his girlfriend of three years, April, to marry him and he's planning to throw a proposal party at a bistro April is into. He requests Nate to be his official event photographer and probably put an album together that he and April can look back on when they are old and retired. Nate is happy for his friend, he knows for certain that he and April will make a great couple, and of course, he'll be glad to do that much for them. At Darcy's workplace, Brandon informs her that he intends to reveal the cover at the magazine's midsummer party. Also, to prove to rival magazines that they are still a force to be reckoned with. He intends on bringing his fiancé to the party as well. She replies with a bit of sarcasm and confesses she will be looking forward to seeing his lucky lady while attending the party with her boyfriend Nate. Later, Darcy and Joanna are in the yoga class. Joanna compels her to join against her will. The ladies discuss how to deal with the situation of having Brandon and Nate in the same room for the party. The following day, Darcy and Nate go to the prop house. On arrival, they check out the items in the store while Nate takes the opportunity to get to know Darcy more. He soon gives up on realizing that her life is centered around work. They pick some beautiful pieces that they think would look great on their set. They head to the florist shop to pick up some flowers. Nate sees his mom's favorite flower. Darcy picks it up to admire it and he takes a photograph of her holding the flower. Next, they stop by a roadside stall to purchase some pretzels and then get somewhere to sit while enjoying the snack. Darcy asks why he left New York in the middle of a job, only to realize that his mom got into an accident and broke her hip after falling off a ladder. He couldn't concentrate on his job after realizing that his mother had to be taken to the operating room and when the fashion editor complained about his shot, he just dropped everything behind and went back home. Thinking back, Nate doesn't blame the fashion editor because he was unprofessional but what matters is that his mother is okay now. The following day at Darcy's office, she goes over the plan for the reader's fitting, while Nate and Joanna make their contribution. Brandon walks into her office and inquires if she's still sticking to their budget, after seeing her plans on the board. Unfortunately, he refers to Nate as her boyfriend, and the confused guy tries to ask why he's being referred to as such. Joanna steps in for her friend and remedies the situation by stylishly taking Brandon away with the conversation, before things gets out of hand. Darcy asks that they take a walk while she explains everything to him. While walking down to the park, she comes clean about everything. She begs that he keep the charade on until everything is over. However, Nate thinks it's crazy because Brandon is a powerful person in the magazine world, and he wouldn't want his name to be dragged into unnecessary stories. Regardless, he decides to do it for her which makes her happy. She hands him the invitation for the midsummer party promising to owe him a favor if he can do it for her because she has already told Brandon she'll be coming with him. Later, Darcy and Joanna set out to every woman's lipstick to meet with the PR. Darcy intends to feature every woman's lipstick on their September cover, so the ladies eventually find a way to convince Victoria to allow them to have early samples of their products. They get into the space for sampling, applying the cosmetic products on themselves, and discussing more of Joanna's career in the beauty line of business. Joanna thinks Darcy should continue spending more time with Nate, because it'll be great for her to repay his favor by helping him out with his job at Simon Leary's wedding. The next morning, Joanna comes to inform Darcy that Nate is at the reception. She observes how Darcy quickly takes up her powder to touch up her face while complaining that he's too early. In a few seconds, Nate walks into her office. Meanwhile, Brandon diverts attention from the file he's holding to Nate walking into Darcy's office. After chit-chatting, Darcy packs up her back ready to go with him to repay one of the favors she owes him. She stops by Joanna's office to notify her to call if a problem arises. But her friend insists she turns off her phone so she doesn't get interrupted by work calls before allowing her friend to take leave. Brandon stops by Joanna's office as soon as Darcy steps out. He asks where Darcy is heading but she refuses to tell him and gives him the impression that Darcy is super happy taking the afternoon off to go party with her boyfriend. Brandon turns around to leave with a fake smile. At Simon's engagement party, Darcy and Nate work together through the photoshoot sessions and they seem to be getting pretty close while Nate takes random shots of Darcy. A while later while everyone is dancing, the duo sits by the dessert table and Nate shows her pictures of Simon's cousin and his girlfriend which he took. They get excited to see Simon and they congratulate him one more time. He finds it amusing that they are finally working together. He thanks them for showing up for him and insists Nate gets rid of his camera to have a dance with Darcy. They move to the dance floor and dance beautifully while talking in low tones. The atmosphere gets tense for them when their foreheads meet and their faces start to come together, but the music suddenly changes to a fast one, bringing them back to reality. After the party is almost over, Darcy heads home, promising to see him the next day. Upon arriving home, she goes through her checklist of items she needs to get together for the magazine cover. Her screen brightens up to reveal a text from Nate and in no time the two of them start texting on the phone. The following day, Nate meets Darcy at her office. He gives her the flower from the florist store in appreciation of the previous day, and as a means of acting according to character. He turns his head to point her attention to her colleagues who are watching them from outside. 
When he is about to go set up the studio she offers to walk him out. The duo steps out in style like some couple head over heels for each other. Brandon stops Nate on his way out, trying to know how long he has been together with Darcy. Fortunately, Darcy hears their voices and she comes to the rescue, acting like she's so in love. She smartly answers his question and sets the floor for Nate to leave while she takes Brandon to update him on how the cover is coming along. Darcy meets up with Nate at the studio later on. She loves the old yet amazing look the bar has. In a few minutes, the readers start arriving, while they get prepped with their makeup and dresses for the shoot. Nate starts taking shots of the ladies while Darcy and Joanna sit discussing their observations. The women look stiff, so Joanna suggests the session might need a woman's touch to make them feel more relaxed. Darcy goes ahead to give the ladies morale for the session which turns out positive because they now feel more relaxed and ready for the shoot. They soon go on a 10-minute break, before getting back on set to continue taking more beautiful shots of the ladies. After the session comes to an end, Darcy thanks Nate and he suggests they go to her office to check out the photos. Meanwhile, Joanna admires them from a distance. At her office, Nate shows her the day's work. Darcy realizes they are alone in the office, so they pack up and prepare to leave. The both of them get up close and are about to kiss a second time but Brandon suddenly shows up and they quickly move away from each other. On getting back home, Nate continually stares at the pictures of Darcy. At home, Joanna calls Darcy to lament about her date which she needs urgent rescue from. She realizes her friend doesn't seem like her usual self, so she asks to know what is going on with her. Darcy admits she has developed feelings for Nate and she worries that he doesn't feel the same about her. Joanna suggests she asks him and it'll be a perfect time to tell him how she feels at the party happening the following night. The next day at the office, Darcy and Joanna wonder why Brandon wants to reveal the cover at the office instead of at the party happening later. Brandon walks into the boardroom and the ladies prepare themselves to hear what he has to say. Nate also walks into the boardroom just in time as Brandon goes on to address everyone. To their surprise, Brandon unveils another image entirely different from what they had prepared for the 15th anniversary of the magazine. Darcy storms right after him as he heads back into his office. She bears her disagreement with what he is doing especially after he tells her she has full control over the cover. She had carried him along with everything they worked on, every step of the way and he never complained about anything once. Yet he's insisting that their work is way below the mark. Darcy thinks it's high time she quit working within his company. Nate tries to make Brandon see that Darcy's work is going to do a lot of redeeming for the company. He thinks the problem is that Brandon is finding it difficult to accept that her work beats his, hands down, and that is why he springs up something entirely different. The duo storms out of Brandon's office. Nate feels horrible because he needs a comeback for his career, and not a total wipe off with the cover he shot that didn't even make it to the shelf. He blames Darcy for bringing up the fake boyfriend thing which looks like the cause of the situation. He refuses to listen to her suggestion to at least try and redeem the situation. On getting home, he seeks his mother's advice on how to go about making things right between himself and Darcy. He knows he has messed things up between them. She suggests he tells her how he feels if she's worth taking the risk for. It's evening and it's time for the 15th anniversary of She Magazine. Guests and clients fill up the place going about networking and mingling with each other. Darcy and Joanna spot Brandon coming in with his fiancée. Immediately, Darcy excuses herself to go grab them some drinks. Meanwhile, Joanna overhears their biggest advertiser saying he's going to pull his advertisement out. She runs towards Darcy and informs her of what she just heard from Trent Dearden. She suggests Darcy does something, or else they are not going to survive the situation. Darcy looks worried, and she attempts to try something. She runs towards Mia telling her to show her how to control what goes up on the screen and then texts Nate to come to their magazine midsummer party, as soon as possible. Mia comes back and she instructs her to switch the image on the screen to the one on her phone. Darcy explains the situation to Mia and why she needs to act fast so their company doesn't go under due to a lack of finances to pay up revenues if their advertisers should pull out. Mia hesitates a little before finally clicking on the proceed button. Heads begin to turn around to the screen almost as soon as the image changes. Brandon gets pissed on seeing the image on the screen and starts calling for Mia. Darcy runs to meet Trent to seek his opinion on the cover on the screen which was what she discussed with him. Fortunately, Trent thinks it's spectacular and he promises to take out more ads instead of pulling them down if what's on the screen turns out to be their magazine cover. Nate walks into the party and she informs him of the situation that led to her swapping the images. The both of them apologize to each other for the recent happenings, with Nate taking the lead for pouring his frustration for Brandon on her. The editor of Bliss magazine, Karen Williams, congratulates Darcy. She takes the opportunity to introduce Nate to her. Karen is surprised because Nate had run off on them when his mother got hurt. However, she offers him a second chance to work with them. She gives him her assistant's card to call them when he's ready. Nate thanks her and reveals that the whole thing is a product of a collaboration between him and Darcy. Karen decides to offer Darcy the position of beauty editor on her team and looks forward to working with the duo. Darcy is excited at the opportunity unraveling itself before them. A happy Joanna congratulates her friend because she saw when Karen handed her card which only means one thing. 
Darcy congratulates her as well because she will automatically become the new beauty editor when she leaves to work with Bliss. Darcy intends on applying for the position, because who wouldn't want to work for the best-selling glossy magazine in the country? After Joanna leaves them, Nate apologizes for crossing the line the night Brandon saw them together in the office. However, Darcy clarifies that she wasn't upset because he took it too far, but she was embarrassed thinking they had something real going on, and when she saw Brandon, she realized it was all part of the act. Nate is surprised to hear what she thought the other day. Unbeknownst to her, he accepted to be her fake boyfriend because he was beginning to fall in love with her. He confesses how he feels about her and takes her for a dance. They talk about how meeting each other has made them realize certain things they didn't know about each other and how it has helped refocus their passion. The conversation ends with a loving kiss as Joanna stares at them in admiration of a love that began as a lie.